What's up, Vape fam? Sortil here, and welcome to the Vaporworks Lab. Today, we're going to take a look at a new nitrous RDA from Dam Vape and Coco Sarong. Honestly, it's an RDTA, not an RDA, but the way they name it makes it sound like it's an RDA. I don't know why, but it is the nitrous 24 millimeter RDA with tank. Now, again, I don't know why they name it that way. It's an RDTA. I don't know if it's just something silly. Because if you follow Coco Sarong's Instagram, he can be very silly. So I don't know if that's part of it or what, but it's an RDTA. So we're not going to build this thing up. I already did that on the last live build session. There will be a link somewhere up here to go to the live build session where I built this thing up. And then there will be a pinned comment with chapters for all the builds. So you can easily get to the nitrous 24 millimeter RDA with tank. Boy, that's a mouthful. But today what we're going to do, we will dive down, take a look at it, break it apart, show you all the ins and outs. I will re-wick the build that we put in uh, this on the live build stream. Then we'll juice it up, come back up, vape on it, and I'll tell you guys what I think. So let's dive on over. All right, here is the package or nitrous 24 millimeter RDA with tank from Coco Sarong and Dam Vape comes in. I really kind of like this package, but once you get it open and kind of take everything out, it doesn't really want to stay shut very well. Open that up. Here is the RDTA. I actually really like the look of this. I like the fact that the tank is actually relatively small. It uses the mesh wicking rod similar to the A Temporal Boro Bridge, which for a small tank like this works perfect. These wick so much better than stainless steel wicking rods. It's just ridiculous. Uh, almost as good as just using cotton. Sometimes better because if you're not careful, they will kind of flood your cotton if you just let it sit for too long. On the bottom here, nitrous 24 millimeter RDA with tank, damn vape, Coco Sarong. The squonk pin does come pre-installed. And if you squonk it, it just refills the tank like a lot of RDTAs of this style. 810 drip tip on the top. Pretty snug. O-ring on the inside, so it will fit most of your custom 810 drip tips. If you want to get to the AFC ring, this piece unscrews. O-ring right there. There is a replacement O-ring for all of these in the package. AFC ring comes off. Clean that up if you like. Don't know if they're going to release extra colors or anything like that. I kind of doubt it considering they did not do it for the Nitrous RTA. And it kind of had a similar way of getting to the AFC ring. So if it's not something where it just slides right off like the 22 millimeter and it doesn't come with a beauty ring, they're probably not going to do it. Although the Nitrous RTA came with a beauty ring and they still didn't do it. But it might have had to do with sales. I'm not sure. All right. So to get to your tank, this base just unscrews right like that. Tank comes off. There is your mesh wicking rods. Now I do wish this was like the profile RDTA and you could unscrew all of this and this whole section came away and there was another 510 that was shorter and you could just screw your base back down on it and use it as a straight RDA. One of the reasons why the profile RDTA is still one of my favorite atomizers of all time is its ability to switch between RDTA and RDA so simply. And this was really a perfect RDA to do that, but unfortunately they did not. All right, set this off to the side. You also get replacement glass. This is another 810 drip tip, although it kind of looks like a 510 but it's one of those that kind of sits flush and it's not as wide bore. I'm not a fan of this, but I'm sure a lot of people will be. Then just like the original nitrous, you have a 510 adapter, which I love because you just don't see this included in many rebuildables anymore. Then under here, 
little three-way tool but this actually has everything you kind of need this is the allen key to get the squonk pin out flathead to get the standard 510 pin in and then this for i don't know what but you get it <laughs> then you get some extra o-rings grub screws actually you get a ton of o-rings extra mesh wicking rods i love that you can order more of these from damn vape they kind of come in a square package and you have to roll them up yourself but they do include four extra in the package you got your manual standard 510 pin if you so choose then you have this right here this is the damn vape coil cutting guide where your coil just kind of sits up here and your legs dangle down or reverse kind of put your coil in there and have them dangle down and then cut them i'm not a huge fan of this coil cutting tool but i do like the fact that they finally did it in metal i like that it has kind of a key ring hook right there so if you are a fan of this this is easily the best version they've come out with so far then it also comes with this this is just a kind of protector it will go underneath right like that that way you don't scratch up your mod or your atomizer. I don't really like using them, but they are pretty big in Indonesia and in the Philippines, I've noticed. All right, put all this back in here. Set this off to the side. We will go ahead, stick this on the Hadron Plus, and take a look at the deck. There we go. Same coils that were installed on the live build stream. So these come out to about 0 0.1, 0 0.11, depending on the mod that you put it on. But they should be 0.11. All right. So you have a relatively large fill port right there, which I really like. Got your airflow release on the other side. Wick wells are plenty deep. You can actually thin your wicks out pretty heavily if you'd like, given the fact that it's using those mesh wicking rods and the kind of wick wells are as deep as they are and the way that they're shaped. Kind of thinning them out is really the best route to go. Now, when we did the live build session, I did not really do that because I was using Cloud9 cotton. And if you start to thin it out too much, you'll start to just take huge hunks with it. So didn't really do that. But today we're probably going to thin the cotton out pretty good. Uh, so you, you can see your peak is clearly outlined. But, you know, considering where the wick wells are, you don't really need that to guide you as far as your coil placement or anything like that. But it's extremely simple to build on. Flathead screws. So if you're wondering where the Phillips head part of that three-way tool is for this one, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. I think they just threw it in there instead of giving you a two-way tool, which would have been better. All right go ahead and wick this up now this time i'm gonna go with my standard amoza cotton instead of the cloud nine basically so i can thin it out some cloud nine just a little finicky when it comes to being thinned out i think it's just the way that it's all done up you end up taking these big huge hunks from cloud nine and Amoza is more all straight fibers. It's not like it's compressed chunks, which sometimes seems like how Cloud9 is. Not just all big long fibers, kind of compressed chunks that have been pressurized together or something similar. I don't know what they do for Cloud9, but if you thin it out too much, you will take hunks. About like that. Every time I do it, it seems like one side is longer than the other. I'm going to pull these through. Flip a little bit more off that. That right there should be good. Now I will say, you don't want to fill the tank before you start to kind of juice and fire 
your coils and cotton. Go ahead and juice and fire your coils and cotton before you fill that tank because those mesh wicking rods do work extremely well and you'll start to get too much liquid. You'll flood it. You'll have liquid running off of the deck here. A little under under action for Mike Vapes. It's pretty good. We will clean it up just a little bit. And you want to kind of do your best to just lay it on top of those mesh wicking rods. I think that looks pretty good. We're gonna use my custard filled flaky pastry. I think that's good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and jump back up top before we put this top cap on and I will fill this up. All right, so I've got a bottle tip kind of like this. It will allow me to fill this tank using a bottle top like this. You just have to be a little careful and it's not something I can really do on camera uh, very well. There we go. Put top back on. See what it's reading the coils as 0.11. So spot on. I'm going to go ahead and crank the wattage up to 75. That's where we will start out. So airflow wide open. Even with that huge amount of airflow, the flavor is just on point. I'm actually going to set it to where I like the nitrous 22 millimeter, which is three holes open on the top, bottom just wide open. Airflow is just exceptionally smooth. It's just like the nitrous 22 millimeter. The compressed chamber is, is very similar. You know, when you put the top cap on, let's take a look at the inside of the top cap here. So it's still a compressed chamber, very much set up for dual coils. There is not a single coil top cap to this, just this dual coil one. But given that it's a 24 millimeter, I can kind of understand that. All right, go ahead and crank the wattage up some. 75 is good to just kind of get us rolling, but at 0.11, really going to want it a little bit higher. Let's just pump it all the way up to 90 watts. Here we go. That is very, very good. Now you can drip, no problem. Just don't want to drip a lot because those mesh wicking rods work so well. You will flood it if you're not careful. That is fully saturated, just two drops out of that bottle. All right. So it's working good at 90 watts. Let's go ahead and crank it all the way up to like 110. And then we're going to go ahead and stick it on the Defiant Designs TS here. All right, here we go. I'm going to drop. 
Another couple of drops in here. Here we go. Flavor off this is absolutely spectacular. Oh man, probably the most flavorful or DTA I've ever come across. Aside from maybe the profile RDTA. Right up there with it. If not better. All right, here we go. Got it on the Defiant Designs TS. If I hit that squonk bottle, it'll refill the tank. But at the moment, I really don't need that. So go ahead, see how it does. I'm actually going to close the airflow down by one hole. So now I've got two holes open on the top. Bottom row just wide open. The coils are cut at five millimeter. And when you do that, basically that whole bottom row is mostly bottom airflow. It, it is probably hitting a little bit of the underside, but most of that is all bottom airflow. Two at the top are just kind of laser focused slamming into the side of the coil. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's so good. See how our wicking is doing. There you go. Still plenty saturated. Those mesh wicking rods just work extremely well. I really wish some full-sized RDTAs would come out with larger tanks. You know, maybe a tank the size of the profile RDTA that used mesh wicking rods. All right. We vape through some of this liquid. If we go ahead, hit the squonk bottle. Fills that tank up in no time. That was just barely pressing in on it. If it's completely empty, just one long, good press. Kind of hold it until the tank fills up and you're good to go. This custard filled flaky pastry comes across amazing in this. Very similar to the nitrous 22 millimeter as far as flavor goes. One thing that I do like about the 24 millimeter version is I can use three millimeter ID coils at a lower resistance and the top cap doesn't get crazy hot. It does get warm for sure. And if you chain vape, it will get hot eventually, but it's nothing like the, the 22 millimeter where if you stick two three millimeter ID coils in there at lower resistance, it gets hot really fast. Even building at 0.15 with two three millimeter ID coils in the 22 millimeter, it can get hot. Pros and cons, what do I like? What do I dislike about the nitrous RDTA or nitrous 24 millimeter RDA with tank, however you want to say it? I really only have one con to this, and that's the fact that you can't remove the tank fully and kind of screw in a base and use it as just a straight RDA, similar to the way the profile RDTA allows you to do. I was really hoping that would be the case with this one, but honestly, that is a very minor complaint and more of a personal complaint because you can use this as a straight dripper. Don't fill the tank up, just ignore the tank and drip in it. And it works outstanding as just a straight dripper RDA. But if you do want to use the tank, it also works phenomenally well, especially with those mesh wicking rods. As far as pros go, pretty much everything else. I love the airflow on this. Flavor off of it is spectacular. That compressed chamber, like the 22 millimeter version, works just outstandingly well. If you would rather kind of cut the bottom row down before you cut the top row down, just Take the AFC off, flip it, put it back on. There you go. You're good to go. Just like the 22 millimeter. Actually really love the look of it, even with the tank, even on something like a mechanical tube mod. In the build session, I actually stuck it on the Kennedy Vindicator. I thought it looked absolutely outstanding on that, and it vaped spectacularly. It's easy to build, easy to wick. I like the fact that the squonking to refill a tank works extremely well. It's usually just one good kind of press on the bottle. 
and your tank is full you're ready to go the mesh wicking rods they work outstanding it's a big pro for me i like mesh wicking rods better than stainless steel wicking rods and they work almost as good as using just your straight cotton from your coils if you're a fan of the nitrous 22 millimeter you are definitely going to be a fan of this unless of course you just cannot stand rdtas that's kind of the reason why i wish there'd been an option to just remove the tank completely and use it as a straight 24 millimeter nitrous rda but as i said it's pretty easy just to ignore the tank unless of course aesthetically you don't like that it's really about the only con i can think of to this everything else is pro love the flavor off this has to be one of the most flavorful rdas that has come out in 2022 because this did come out before the turn of the new year. So this definitely falls into my best of 2022, which I will have a video going over my favorite RDAs, RTAs, RDTAs, and mechanical mods of 2022 here coming up soon. All right, so if you are in the market for a new RDA, RDTA, whatever the case may be, you definitely will not be disappointed in the nitrous 24 millimeter RDA with tank. Now, you may just hate the aesthetic look of an RDTA, even though you can kind of just ignore the tank. And it's unfortunate you can't take the tank off and just use it as a straight dripper, but it's really easy just to ignore the tank if that is your complaint with this, because everything else about this is absolutely top fucking tier. All right, guys, that's it. Vape on, and I will catch you all in the next one.